President, please be seated. The court is back in session. On internal rule 91, based of the ECCC, the chamber gives the floor to the co-prosecutors to put question to the witness from the room before other parties. The combined time for co-prosecutors and uh, colleague lawyers is two sessions. You may now proceed. <laughs> One. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours, everyone in and around the courtroom. My name is Song Cho Won. I am the Deputy Co-Prosecutor of the National Side. I will have a, several questions this afternoon to ask you. I want to start uh, first with uh, the 17 April 1975. On that particular day, where did you leave and what did you do? No. Answer. I lived in Phnom Sompo Commune, Banan District, Batambong Province. Question. What was your occupation then? President, uh, please observe the microphone before you speak, uh, Mr. Witness. Witness, I uh, was simply chief of uh, a platoon. Question. Phnom Sampo Commune, Banan District. Concerning this commune and district, uh, what uh, sector was it in? Answer, it was in Sector 3. It was said that uh, it was uh, within Sector 3 back then. Question, what was the zone? President, once again, please observe the microphone, Mr. Witness. Answer, it was uh, within the the northwest zone. Co prosecutor, thank you. A while ago, you stated that after 17 April 1975, you were assigned to be chief of a platoon. Do you recall and uh, which uh, company and battalion uh, was your uh, platoons in? Answer, it was under company number one uh, within Kroppurjung village uh, Nom Sampo Sub-District. At that time, I was appointed to be a chief of a platoon and I was responsible for some tasks. Question. Do you recall the name of your immediate supervisor at that time and what was his real function? Answer, it was Ta Hong. Ta Hong was the uh, chief of a company within 
Kroppelchen Village. Question. Do you recall uh, what the, uh, which uh, company uh, Da Hong was uh, the chief of? What number of uh, that company? Answer, it was a company number one. Co-prosecutor, Mr. Witness, I would like uh, to clarify some points uh, with you in relation to the statements you provided to the investigators of the OCIJ in document A3 slash 5187 Khmer 00 1979 16 Eon in English 00 and French 00 8C4 you were interviewed by the investigator of the OCIJ at your village. You stated that uh, you were within battalion number one in company number four, whose chairman was Ta Hong. Do you still stand by your statement you provided to the investigator and can you tell the court uh, once again uh, what uh, battalion were you in at that time and uh, which company were you in? Answer. I was under company number four, battalion number one. Co prosecutor, thank you. Concerning battalion number one, did battalion number one belong to the sector or the zone? President, uh, Mr. Winners, uh, please uh, look at the microphone before you speak. You can now give your answer. Answer. It did not belong to any sector. In fact, it belonged to uh, the district. Question. You stated that Da Hong was the chairman of company number four, and can you tell the court uh, who, uh, uh, the, who uh, was the chairman of battalion number one? Answer. It was Da Kroch. Co-prosecutor, thank you. Mr. Witness, I am now moving to a new topic about what happened within your sector, particularly in relation to the Vietnamese. I would like you to tell the court what happened to the Vietnamese within your battalion number one, and can you tell the court what happened to the Vietnamese uh, within other uh, battalions or companies in the sector? Answer. There were Vietnamese, and uh, they were killed at Tul Da Trong. This is what I can tell you and can recall with the Vietnamese uh, were called into a meeting and they were killed at Tul Tat Trong near Phnom Koi or Koi Mountain. Co-prosecutor, I uh, will pose some further questions in relation to that matter. But first, uh, I would like to know about your chairman, that is Da Kroj. Did Da Kroj ever 
search for the identities of the Vietnamese? Answer. No Vietnamese within my, there were no Vietnamese within my battalion. However, there were Vietnamese within other battalions and those Vietnamese were killed and smashed. Co-prosecutor, Mr. Witness, I want to ask you about Da Groch, who was the leader of battalion number one. I want to know whether or not he used to asked and searched for the Vietnamese? Answer, no. He never uh, searched uh, for the Vietnamese. Uh, the bat battalion number two uh, ever uh, searched for the Vietnamese. As I said, uh, there were no Vietnamese uh, within my unit, said the witness. Question. You have just made a mention that there were no Vietnamese within your units. Which uh, units uh, which uh, consists of, consisted of uh, the Vietnamese? There were a lot of uh, Vietnamese in the battalion number two. As for my battalion, that is battalion number one, there were some Chinese. Co-prosecutor, thank you, Mr. Witness. In the same document that you provided your information to the investigator at your village, document E3-5187, in, in the same EON that I have just, that I had, that I read to you earlier, you told the investigator or TERS that in 1976, the Khmer Rouge were searching for the Vietnamese. Croch, who was leader of battalion number one, asked me whether or not there were Vietnamese within uh, my unit. If so, Please uh, report them uh, to me so that I can send them to the upper echelon to handle pre-translation. I want to know about this point, uh, Mr. Witness. Where did Croj ask you about the Vietnamese? Uh, where's about? Answer. He asked me about uh, the Vietnamese at the place where we grind the rice. Where we ground uh, the rice. And as I said earlier, there were only Chinese uh, within my unit at that time. Were there anyone was there anyone with you when he asked you about the Vietnamese? Uh, what circumstances uh, uh, were they when you were asked about the Vietnamese? Answer. At that time, he came to ask me about the Vietnamese. Uh, there was only uh, me and uh, him at that time. And I reported uh, to him that uh, there were no Yuan within my unit, but Chinese. Co-prosecutor, thank you. When leader of battalion, Groj, told you that if uh, there were Vietnamese, uh, you had to uh, report to him so that he can uh, further send information to the upper echelon. Did Kroj tell you who specifically, um, who was specifically the uh, upper echelon? Uh, 
answer. It was the regiment leader that was the uh, upper echelon. Question. A while ago, you stated that Groja was leader of the battalion. Witness. Yes, you are right. And uh, the upper echelon uh, referred to the Cham. Co prosecutor, can you be clear on that point? Who was the upper echelon? Can you tell the names of uh, those who was in the upper echelon level? Answer. It was the Cham who was the uh, chief of uh, the, the, the district. Thank you. The Groot also stated that, quote, uh, send them to upper echelon to handle. What did he mean by uh, stating the word handle? Answer, that meant uh, they had to be killed. The word handle meant uh, kill. Thank you, co-prosecutor. When the group came to talk to you about whether or not there were you and within your unit, did he tell you how to identify the Vietnamese or you and at that time? Answer. The Groot did not ask anything specifically, but he asked uh, whether or not there were Yuan within my unit, and I told him that uh, in my unit there were Chinese, not Yuan. Co-prosecutor, thank you. You have just stated that uh, there were no UN within your unit or battalion, but uh, to you there were UN within battalion number two. Where did those UN come from? President, please hold on and observe the microphone, Mr. Witness. Witness. Actually, a battalion, a number one and number two, was stations uh, next to each other. Co-prosecutor, do you recall the names of the commune and uh, uh, villages which uh, those battalions uh, were stationed in? Answer, there were two battalions within the Kroper Kangcheng village, uh, battalion number one and two. Co-prosecutor, were there any other battalions, for example, battalion number three and battalion number four? Answer, there were two other battalions uh, within Bong Khmum, that is battalion number one and battalion number two. And it was under other village uh, respon uh, responsibility. And I knew only what uh, happened within my village. Co-prosecutor, thank you.
after the court, who was uh, chairman of battalion number one, came to ask you whether or not there were Vietnamese within your battalion. Did you ever witness the arrest of uh, those Vietnamese within your battalion or within the sector? Answer. Yuan was arrested uh, within the battalion number two, and they were sent to the upper echelon. And I did not know where they were sent to. I only noticed that uh, they disappeared. Co-prosecutor, you stated that uh, the arrest happened uh, within the battalion number two. How many uh, people were arrested? Uh, out of that battalion number two? Answer, two of them. Two people had been arrested and sent away. I did not know where they went. Co-prosecutor, Mr. Witness, in your statement that you gave to the investigator at your village, in the same uh, ER and, and page number, you stated, you told the investiga investigator that Croch, who was a leader of battalion number one, came uh, to ask me, are there any UN in your unit? If there are, report them to me so that uh, they can be sent to Upper Ireland to handle. There were no UN in my battalion, but battalion number two did have about 20 UN. I saw them arrest uh, the UN, and their arms were tied uh, behind their backs, and Later on, they were walked away to be killed at Tulta Trong, near Phnom Koi. You, a while ago, made mention that there were only two Yuan arrested uh, within battalion number two. However, in your statement, you s said uh, there were about uh, 20 Yuan. So now, can you clarify this point to the court? How many uh, Yuan uh, were arrested uh, from uh, battalion number two? Answer, it happened a long time ago. I uh, forget uh, almost all of them. Co-prosecutor, fine, Mr. Witness. I may come back to ask you once again about this point. When you saw that the Vietnamese uh, had been arrested. Where uh, did you see the arrest? Uh, where, uh, which location uh, did you see the arrest? Answer. Since the battalions uh, were stationed close to one another, I uh, noticed that uh, that two Yuan uh, were arrested and sent to Tul Ta Trong near Phnom Koi. It was west. It was to the west of my village. It was uh, in a far distance compared to my village. Co-prosecutor, let me go a little bit further into this point. Where exactly did you witness the arrests? Answer, the arrests uh, took place uh, within my village. It happened uh, within battalion number two in the area of uh, my village. Prosecutor, thank you. Do you know who was the one arresting the two Yuan? Answer. 
it was the uh, children of uh, Khmer Rouge cadres. Uh, they were quite young. Question. Do you recall how many of uh, those uh, young children uh, coming to address uh, the UN? Answer, four of them came to arrest uh, the UN. No one dared to protest uh, their activities. Co-prosecutor, could you tell the court uh, the process of the arrest? Uh, what happened first and what happened next and where uh, were uh, the UN uh, placed? They were arrested and uh, walked to the west, walked westward uh, to the killing site. Uh, the killing site uh, was a termite mound. Co-prosecutor, concerning the children of the Khmer Rouge cadre who came to arrest uh, the UN, uh, did they have uh, arms with them? Answer, yes, they had uh, weapons and they uh, carried uh, rifles. Co-prosecutor, were those arrested by uh, the young children tied, tied up, or were they allowed to walk uh, freely? Answer, their hands were tied to their backs. Were they tied in a string? Were they tied together or individually? Answer, uh, they were tied uh, individually. Lee. And two young cadre uh, walked uh, one uh, arrested person. Question: uh, What kind of uh, clothes uh, did they use to tie uh, uh, those uh, people? It was scarf, uh, which was used to tie uh, those people. Question, when they were walked away, you have just said that uh, they were walked uh, westward. Uh, where were uh, these arrested uh, people placed uh, in? Answer, I saw the scalps remaining at Tul Tatrong and uh, I uh, think uh, they may have been brought to that uh, place, Tul Tatrong. Question, you stated that these uh, people were sent to Tul Tatrong near Phnom Koi. Where was it uh, exactly? Which uh, village and commune was it in? Answer, uh, it was located in the same uh, commune where my village was. And it was to the west of the uh, battalion. And it was near Koi Mountain. Question. So Tul Tatrong was in the same village and commune where your battalion was based. Is that correct? Mm. 
they were walked uh, for about three kilometers and then they were killed there. Question. Witness, I'd like to clarify uh, with you regarding this point. You said the uh, children coming to arrest the two Vietnamese and walked them away, and you said that those uh, children were the children of cadres. Were the children soldiers, or were they in a mobile unit, and where did they uh, come from? And so they were the children of the soldiers at the uh, Copper Mountain. They belonged to the cadres in the uh, committee. Tara was in charge of the uh, commune near Copper uh, Mountain, and that is uh, near the main road. Question. You told the chamber that uh, the people were walked away and that you saw skulls uh, there. And you said the two enemies were from battalion number two. And how uh, do you know that uh, the two people who were walked away uh, were June from battalion number two? I heard people uh, said about uh, the skeleton remains at Tu uh, Tatram because uh, those people were walked there and killed. Because once they were walked away, that would be the end of their life. Question. My question is this. You mentioned that the people who were walked away were a June or Vietnamese. And how did you know that they were Vietnamese? Answer. Because there were some Vietnamese people living there. And they were walked away, and they were Vietnamese because they spoke with the accent. Question. Did you know anyone amongst those who were uh, arrested and uh, walked away? Answer, no, I don't because they belong to a different uh, battalion. I did not even know all the soldiers in my own battalion. Question. A while ago, you stated that there were Vietnamese living in your village, and that you knew them because they spoke with the accent. To your recollection, how many Vietnamese people living in your village? And uh, there were only Chinese uh, in my battalion. However, there were uh, some Vietnamese in battalion number two. There were about three or four Vietnamese families in battalion number two. Question. You talk about three or four families. And can you tell the chamber how many people uh, were actually in those three or four families?
answer. I do not know how many members uh, there were in each family. However, I saw them being tied up and walked away. How did you know that there were three or four uh, Jewan families in battalion number two? Because these three or four family members uh, were arrested and walked away. And that's what I saw. Question. When those people were being walked uh, towards the west direction, did you follow them? Or uh, did you try to see where they were heading to? And so, no, I did not dare to go there and look at them immediately. What I saw was they were being walked to the west direction and later on, those who made the arrest returned without those people who were arrested. And later on, I saw the skeleton remains at the Tul Trong, which was the killing site. Question. And when did you actually go to Tul Trong to see the skeleton uh, remains. How much time had passed between the time that you saw them being walked away and the time that you saw the skeleton remains? Answer. I saw the skeleton remains at Tul Trong. Question. Witness. I want to know how much time had passed. You mentioned that you saw people arrested and sent toward that direction. And later on, you said you saw skeleton remains at the Tul Trang near Koi Mountain. What was the passage of time between the time that you saw the arrest and the time that you saw the skeleton remains? Answer, it was about two days after when I walked past the area, I saw the skeleton remains as the flesh had been eaten by wolf. Question, so two days after you walked past to the trunk and you saw the skeleton remains, can you tell the chamber a little bit more? What did you actually see, and what was the uh, condition of the uh, skeleton remain? And so it was likely that those people were uh, hit and killed. Question. When you were at Tul Trang, how many corpses did you see? Answer, there were four. Question, what was the uh, condition of the dead bodies? or corpses. And so the corpses were swollen and being decomposed. Question. 
Can you tell us about those corpses, what they meant, women or children? Answer, they were corpses of adult. I could say they were corpses of husbands and wives. Question. Uh, read the extract of your WRI when you were interviewed in your village. I refer to document E3 slash 5187 with Khmer 0019 7916, English 0027 4178, and French 0027 4185. When you were interviewed, you say, I peeped at the location where they uh, killed those people, and I saw the dead bodies of women and children bearing marks of having been hit on the head with the end of a roof beam, and there were blood everywhere. The skulls of the children were broken like their heads had been swung into tree trunks. After that string of June was killed, I never saw any more June remaining. End of quote. Witness, you said there were dead bodies of women and children and that the heads of their children were seems to be broken as they could have been swung against the tree trunks. What can you say about uh, your uh, statement? And so they were arrested and killed at Totatrong. I did not witness the uh, killing, but I saw uh, dead bodies. It was possible that uh, the body had been swung against uh, the tree trunks. There were many dead bodies in the area. But I did not see all the uh, executions. I only saw the uh, dead bodies. Question. Did you just say that you witnessed uh, some executions and uh, not all executions? If that is the case, can you tell us a little bit more? Did you actually witness uh, any execution? And if so, can you give us a bit more uh, detail? And uh, I only saw the arrest of the four people However, I did not see the killing, and I only saw the uh, skeleton remains there at Tutatrong. That's where they were killed. Question. Also, in the uh, extract that I just read out, uh, you said there was a blood everywhere. My question to you is that how much blood was it? And where was it? Was it near the body? Answer. I saw blood stained on the ground. That could be uh, the blood stained, uh, blood remained uh, from being bitten to death. I only saw it and then I uh, fled the area. Question. After you witnessed the arrest and later you saw dead bodies at Tur Tatram, did you see any other Vietnamese in your village or in your battalion? 
President uh, Witness, please hold on, and Councillor Copper, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. In my translation, I hear, um, I heard the witness say, skeleton remains. But the question back uh, in the English translation is, um, from the prosecution, dead bodies. Um, I mean, technically, a skeleton originates from a dead body, but uh, corpses, dead bodies, skeleton remains is something different. And it is important because it takes a while for a skeleton remain to become a skeleton remain. It needs to be decomposing first. And uh, in, 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 li in, in light of the time um, that the witness said uh, passed between him seeing the arrest and subsequently seeing the um, skeleton remains, he obviously didn't see um, decomposed bodies. So I don't know, it might be an English translation issue, but um, I think there is a difference. National Deputy Co-Prosecutor, I am actually trying to clarify with the witness regarding uh, the uh, dead bodies. He said he uh, saw four dead bodies. And allow me to clarify it again. Uh, witness, you said that you were at the uh, Tutakatram and you saw uh, four dead bodies. And could you please clarify again what was the condition of the dead bodies? And, sir, in fact, uh, some dead bodies uh, dried up after the killing. And beside these uh, dry up uh, dead bodies, did you see any other dead bodies and that you could identify their gender? For example, they were the dead bodies of women and uh, young uh, children? And so actually, the, the bad smell was so strong that I did not uh, dare to approach closer. Question. After you witnessed people being arrested and walked away, and then later on you saw the decomposed bodies, Did you notice that uh, if there were any other Vietnamese uh, in your village or in battalion number two? Uh, may I no, there was no longer any remaining Vietnamese since they all had been arrested. Question. Were you ever explained by your commander chief or by any upper echelon the reason for the arrest of the Vietnamese in your area? And sir, I did not know the reasons for the arrest. I only saw Vietnamese people arrested. Nobody told me any uh, reasons. And of course, I did not dare ask them any question about that. I was mindful of my own life. Question. Didn't your battalion commander tell you the reason why he asked you if there were any Vietnamese in your uh, unit? 
and why Vietnamese in Battalion Number no. Two had been arrested. Answer: No, I never asked for any reasons. How could I dare to ask for reasons? They killed the people without mercy, so how could I possibly ask for reasons? Question. You said people were killed uh, merciless. Whom are you referring to? Answer. That group was merciless. They use us every day and night. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I conclude my uh, portion and I'd like to hand the floor to my uh, colleague. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honours, Madam, Honourable Judge, Varatis. Sir, I will proceed with my examination regarding the arrest and execution of Vietnamese. I have a few follow up questions to put to you. You said that in your battalion there were only Chinese and no Vietnamese. That's what you, you said. What happened to the Chinese? Were they themselves arrested? And is it true that the Vietnamese were not arrested? No, uh, there was no arrest of the Chinese. Chinese uh, were used. And sometimes, of course, they uh, did not have food to, to eat. Bien, je voudrais revenir alors aux, aux chiffres que vous avez. Very well. Let us look at the figures you gave. At the beginning of the hearing, you said there were many Vietnamese in Battalion Number Two, and you subsequently pointed out that there were three or four families of Vietnamese. Is it possible that all in all there may have been 20 people in all the three or four families? There were less than 20 members in those three or four uh, families. There could be three or four uh, members in each family. If I understood you correctly, you saw two Vietnamese arrested. You saw them with your own eyes. But you are telling us that there were probably more than Ten Vietnamese in Battalion Two. If I say that there were three or four persons per family, and there were three or four families, what happened to the other Vietnamese? That is the Vietnamese you didn't see being arrested and led away. Uh. Since I did not see it, I did not know what happened to them. I can only uh, tell you what I saw. But you said a while ago that you did not see them again in battalion number two. Did someone in your village, in the battalion, or among the authorities tell you what happened to the Vietnamese? No. 
Je voudrais revenir à l'euro. I would like us to talk about the four bodies you saw in the forest at Tultatron. How far were you from the bodies when you saw them? I was about uh, 10 meters away. Est-ce que vous êtes sûr d'avoir vu? Are you sure you saw all the bodies at that location, or you were too far? to have seen all of them. I could only see what I had described. Vous avez vu deux personnes. You saw two persons being arrested and led in that direction, and then you saw four bodies. Did you see any clothes on those four bodies? There was no longer any clothing on those dead bodies since the body uh, bodies were being decomposed. Est-ce que vous avez reconnu Were you able to recognize who the persons were in spite of the advanced stage of decomposition? Were you able to identify that the persons who had been led away were indeed Vietnamese? No because I had a look from a, a rather uh, a distance. In fact, I happened to be there when I uh, tended uh, the water buffaloes. A while ago, you were asked whether you were able to identify the bodies of children and you told the investigating judges that you saw bodies of children whose skulls had been broken. So let me put a question to you again. Did you see the bodies of children at that location that is at Tul Tatron? The dog uh, ate uh, some of uh, the bones. And there were quite a number of dead bodies, and the smell was very strong, so I did not stand there and examine uh, individually. Just to try to clarify things a bit, uh, earlier you spoke about many bodies. Now you say a great number of bodies. So for you, does four mean a great number or a small number of bodies? I saw some skulls there and some skeleton remains. And for corpses who had recently been killed, had uh, were uh, swollen. So, if I understood well, you on you saw on the one hand bones and skulls, and on the other hand bodies that were swollen, that were decomposing. So. Must I understand that there were two kinds of bodies on site? My answer. 
you are right. I also saw bones and scalps. Scalps. D'accord. Alors pour essayer. Fine. Well, now in order to understand better how many bodies were swollen and how many skulls there were with bones. So I'm speaking about the two categories of bodies you saw. So how many bodies were there in each category among the bodies that were swollen and among the bodies that were already dry? Answer. I did not uh, count uh, how many bones and skulls were actually there. I saw the composed body and after looking at them for a while, I walked away. So when you spoke about the number four, you meant the four bodies that were decomposing. Answer, yes. That of four bodies uh, had been recently smashed. And as for the uh, skulls, uh, they perhaps those uh, people, the, the, the skulls remained from those people who were killed uh, a few days ago. Fine, so we understood that you did not count the skulls, therefore. A last question regarding these uh, Vietnamese people. The authorities in your battalion, or in the commune, or in the district, did they ever call the Vietnamese enemies of the regime? Did they speak to you about the fact that the Vietnamese uh, were enemies? Answer. They did not say this to me. I was asked whether or not there were Vietnamese within my unit. I replied that there were only Chinese, and after hearing this, he walked away. Fine. Before the break, I would like to start speaking about another topic which is the Kamping Pui Dam. You, in fact, spoke about uh, the building of this dam to the investigators and to the investigating judge. So could you speak to us very briefly about uh, the importance and about the size of this Kamping Pui Dam so that we can have at least a basic idea? Answer. Uh, the the base uh, of their dam was about 100 uh, meter long, and the crest of the dam was about um, 70 meters long. Were there dikes? And uh, did the construction cover several kilometers or several hundreds of meters? President, um, please hold on to Mr. Witness, uh, and you may proceed, Council for the Kilson Pond. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I was uh, waiting for the co-prosecutor's second question in order to understand what he was trying to get at. But what I, tried, what I seem to understand is that he wants to speak about uh, the Kamping Kui Dam, which apparently is not in the scope of case 002-2. So therefore, I object to this line of questioning if uh, the co-prosecutor indeed intends to continue with these questions. 
Mr. President, answer the co-prosecutor. I wish to answer. Well, this is just an introductory question. What I really want to know is who visited this dam, and in particular, uh, the client of uh, my learned colleague here present. I won't uh, dwell on the building of the dam, but rather I will just put one or two introductory questions and then focus on possible visits of senior leaders or foreign delegations to this dam. Yes, Mr. President, uh, says the Defense Council, if this dam is not within the scope of the trial, so I, I do not see why the visits of uh, senior leaders uh, would also be in the scope of the trial. So I would like uh, uh, us to only focus on the scope of the, of the case. Mr. President, answers the co-prosecutor, we're speaking here about the role of the accused, about his presence on the field. This is just one example out of many others of dams he could have visited, such as Trapyang Tmol. So the point is here to establish the role of the accused persons. Of course, uh, these questions, therefore, will be part of the scope of this trial. President, the objection by the Defense Council for Mr. Kirsenpon to the last question put by the Deputy International Co-Prosecutor to this witness is overruled. The question is related to the policy and roles of uh, the accused. However, I instruct the Deputy International prosecutors to limit uh, specific questions only uh, to uh, Bang Kamping Pui since it is not uh, within the scope of uh, the closing order. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, now another question regarding this point. Was this dam, Komping Pui, also known as the 17 January Dam? Answer. I am not aware of that, whether or not uh, it was also known as the 17 January Dam. Was there only one single dam at that place, Kamping Pui? Ba. Answer, yes. There was only one dam. Que Did Khmer Rouge leaders or foreign delegations come to visit the construction site of the Kamping Pui Dam? Are you aware of that? I do not have idea about the uh, visits of the senior people or the upper echelon. 
President, thank you. It is now break time. The chamber will take a short break from now until 3 p.m. Court officer, please assist uh, the witness during the break time in the waiting room, and please invite uh, him back into the witness stands in the courtroom at 3 p.m. The court is now in recess.